Hey, Jim, thanks for having me. All right, John, we got lucky tonight because, uh, yeah, you know, I know. Yeah, we'll talk about your company, BuzzFeed, but we also had a chance to talk about Twitter. Yeah. All right, just give it to me, the IPO. Monumental, earth-shaking, what's it mean? Well, it's the first pure social media IPO, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. Facebook was running banners. Facebook was running the little banners. Right. This is a company that's pure in-stream content advertising out of the gate. What we know right now is it's less than a billion dollars in revenue because they're filing under the Jobs Act, so they get to do it confidentially. We won't know any numbers unless they leak out until three weeks before the roadshow. Um, so relatively little information right now, but a lot of excitement. No, so they're not doing the traditional route. They're using that exception that the yeah. that Congress just gave them. Secret IPO, it's called. Secret IPO. For companies that do less than a billion in revenue. So right now, everybody, there's, you know, there's a lot of like Twitter sphere chatter going on trying to figure out, you know, is the document going to come out? Are people trying to, it was just announced that Goldman probably got the underwriting. Okay. Lots of speculation. Right, so one thing you can tell me, uh, people who you look at Twitter, they say, well, I don't see any ads. How can they be making any money? Yeah. Now, when I go to BuzzFeed, I see ads, but I see them in a very non-intrusive way. Right. Am I looking at ads and just not knowing it's Twitter? You're looking at what you call native advertising. David Ogilvie started this with the advertorial. It's, it's, it's advertising that's native to the format. So Google AdWords is the original native ad, okay. ad format, right? Facebook, when you see a sponsored story, that's the ad. And on Twitter, when you see those sponsored Twitter updates from brands that are put in your stream, that's the content-driven ad. It's a piece of information that tells you about a product. It's not a giant banner that jumps into your face. And Twitter's a pure play for this. So we'll have to look through the numbers. We'll have to see if the margin's there. We'll have to see how they're performing. But for investors that really want to look at investing in pure social content-driven advertising, this is the first shot. Okay, now BuzzFeed, what I like about what you guys do is you've actually figured out algorithmically what people are interested in. Twitter's more organic in some ways. It, can they ever reach, do the advertisers want to be in Twitter as much as they would want to be with your curated, targeted media? I, I think there's a lot of room out there for content-driven advertising and social. Twitter has a lot of great targeting options from being able to target people who follow certain types of people or people who have expressed different kinds of interests. I think it's going to be an excellent ad product. I think it already is an excellent ad product. I think the whole banner ecosystem of people buying banners on big websites, that's going to be eaten by social advertising. Facebook will get it. Twitter will get it. BuzzFeed will get a lot of it. YouTube will get a lot of it. No one's going to buy banners anymore from a publisher. Okay, now the fact that they're filing this IPO, I mean, I thought that there were people's, I, I suggested Apple should buy it for $10 billion, yeah. get more social. Yeah. What do you, look, take an outside guess. What is this thing going to be worth? 10 to 20. I, 10 to 20. 10 so to 20. Just 10 to 20. some giant and... Yeah, I think that's what people are saying. 10 to 20 is what people have been saying for a while. Why do you think they want to go public rather than just say, listen, you know what, take the best bid from Facebook, from Google? Uh, I think it's interesting that they're going public much earlier than Facebook did. I don't remember how many billions, but they had billions of dollars of revenue when Facebook went out. So this is at 1 billion. I think these guys want to be a big independent company. Right. They want to be the newswire for the 21st century. They have the opportunity to do that, and they can chart an independent path. Okay, so let's get that. Newswire, you're saying that they could be the AP for the 20th century, and you're the New York Times for the 20th century, 21st century? I mean, I, I, look, I know that no I, one's I mean, the I mean, right. you know whether, I mean. whether, we're, whether we're Viacom or Time Warner or the New York Times for the 21st century, we're, we're a media company. Okay. They're a wire. They're a cable network. I'd put them in the same, you know, in the same bucket I put Facebook. They're the train tracks. Okay. I'm locomotives driving boxcars like of content. Oh, I liked it. Now, uh, one last question before we uh, come back and talk about BuzzFeed. Yeah. A lot of times you get off the desk and people say, listen, this thing's really peaked. I remember Facebook, they turned out that they had mobile and they weren't ready yet. Yeah. Is there an Achilles heel? I mean, when I get off the desk with you, it's a knockback when you say, yeah, like Twitter, I mean, it's good, but it's not what it should be or it's not what it's going to be. I mean, I think it's early days for them. I think this is a rare thing. I do. I think a lot of companies wait I want to so buy this if I'm listening to you. A lot of companies waited so long to go public that a lot of the growth was taken out of it. I don't think that's the case here. I think they have a relatively small sales force. They're just starting to you know, penetrate the agencies. You hear someone like Martin Sorrell speak publicly. He talks about what they're doing with Facebook, but Twitter is still tiny. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of upside here. There's a lot more people to get on this platform. I think they have two or 300 million people on it compared to the billion that you have on Facebook. Right. All right, more Mad Money next with John Steinberg, President and COO of BuzzFeed.